where do the largest, strongest animals on this planet get their protein from? Is it <laughs> true that they're all vegans or herbivores? Th well, th there's, there's absolutely no question that the largest, strongest terrestrial animals on the planet are all strict herbivores. And that is not only true now, but it's always been true. Because when you look at the biggest, strongest dinosaurs, they were the plant eaters. And there was no T-Rex on the planet that would attack a full-grown uh, uh, sauropod. Because those dinosaurs were so huge and so strong, they would have easily killed uh, a T-Rex or, or uh, uh, any of the other smaller carnivorous type dinosaurs. It's just like even today, no lion, no tiger will attack a full grown healthy elephant because they will easily kill them. And so the biggest, strongest land animals are now and always have been strict plant eaters. Um, and where do they get their protein? From plants because only plants make protein. All protein that is found in animal tissues is recycled plant protein. We've been told we need animal products to be healthy. Is this true? Is this true for certain blood types? Um, oh, that makes me want to go find a padded room so I can scream and throw things. Um, no. Number one, there is nothing in animal tissue um, that we need or that we can't find in a healthier form in plant foods. Um, now there are, there is a specific nutrient, namely vit uh, vitamin B12, that when you look at the usual things Westerners eat, is more commonly found in animal foods, but that's because those animals either ingested uh, bacteria directly or ingested bacterial products. But all B12 is made by bacteria. And the reason that we don't find B12 in plant-based diets in modern Western countries is because we've eliminated the natural sources of B12. Again, all B12 is made by bacteria. But we've sterilized our water. We grow our plants on B12 deficient soils. Then we wash them like crazy. And so we've eliminated those natural sources of the bacteria that make the B12, and that's why it's more difficult to get B12 from our environment or just from the plants. But the easy solution to that is simply to take a supplement. So the, the difficulty with B12 on a plant-based diet in Western countries is an artifact of the way we live. It has nothing to do with the deficiency of the diet per se. Uh, but there is nothing in uh, uh, animal tissue that we need that can't be found uh, in, in, in uh, plants uh, or a plant-based diet. And in fact, uh, these nutrients are actually um, uh, in much uh, healthier uh, um, and better form coming from plants. And there are scores of nutrients that you find in plants. And, uh, plant foods that you cannot find in animal foods. And that has to do with all sorts of antioxidants, all sorts of phytochemicals, um, and the various kinds of fiber. None of that is to be found in animal tissue. You mentioned that all protein is made by plants. Is it true that no animal is able to take nitrogen out of the air and incorporate it into an amino acid, and that only plants can do that? So any protein you get from an animal source is secondhand plant protein? That's absolutely true. And, and, and that is the key, that um, what makes protein protein is the presence of the element nitrogen. And nitrogen, um, when air is like over 90% nitrogen, but the nitrogen that's in the air is in the form of uh, nitrogen molecules that are triple bonded to each other, very uh, inert and active molecule and only plants uh, working together with bacteria have the enzymes necessary to break apart those nitrogen molecules and then change them chemically so that they can be incorporated into the amino acids that make up the proteins uh, that first become plant tissues and then when the animals eat them, they become animal tissue. So only plants can make protein and that's why any protein found in an animal 
is recycled plant protein.